everybody. I'm Megan Fraser McGrogan, the executive director of the Greater Utica Chamber and your host for the Leveling Up podcast. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We have a really exciting show in store. Before we get to that, I want to talk to you about the previous episodes of the Leveling Up podcast. We have so many great episodes. We would love if you went to go check them out. They are all at greateruticachamber.org. You can watch them there like we're, you might be watching today. So we have a video component of the podcast or you can just simply digest them wherever you get podcasts. So Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, any of those places, make sure you subscribe to the show. And that way you're always in the know with all of our area businesses and organizations. These shows are meant to make sure that you get to know them better. And more importantly, you know how you can support them. So please go on and check out those past shows. And we would love it if you, again, would subscribe to those and share episodes if you like them. There's so many different ones. We have over 50 in the log since the pandemic started. So we hope that you'll go check them out. But today we have a really exciting format for our podcast. So for the next couple of weeks, we are going to be featuring our finalists for our 2020 Business of the Year Awards. So this year we're changing things up a bit because we can't do an event in person. We are actually gonna be hosting a one hour television special on Tuesday, December 15th from seven to 8 p.m. And that's going to be on CBS Utica. If you don't have cable, no worries. We are going to stream it online as well. And we hope you'll tune in for that. Well, you will get to know all these finalists once again. And ultimately, we will unveil our winners of the 2020 Business of the Year Awards on that special. Again, that's Tuesday, December 15th from 7 to 8 p.m. So please mark your calendars. And today, we're going to get to know one of those finalists as well. Uh, so this morning, I have with me Maureen uh, McCarthy-Tracy from Northland Communications. Maureen, thank you so much for being with me. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. So Maureen, um, let us know a little bit about your role at Northland. You guys are a family-owned business. You've been in the community for so, so long. Uh, I know we've celebrated a very important ribbon cutting for you guys at your uh, location out in Holland Patton recently. Um, so give us an idea of what do you do for Northland? And then if nobody has ever heard of Northland, what do you guys do in our community? Sure, sure. Yeah, so that was, uh, that was actually three years ago. And, uh, you know, back in the day, we had 450 people come through for an amazing celebration at the expansion in Holland Patent. Mm -hmm. um, but my, my role at Northland, um, I'm the Vice President of Community and Connections. And really what that means is, um, you know, I, I take care of our community and sponsorship budget. Um, I um, am responsible for all of our memberships. Uh, so, you know, our memberships um, and our activity with organizations like the Utica Chamber. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just, you know, making sure that the customers have the best possible experience that they can with Northland. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if nobody has heard of Northland, uh, obviously your name Northland Communications might give them a little bit of a clue, but give us the sure. kind of overview of Northland's <clears throat> whole scope of work and what do you guys do? Sure. I, I think the easiest uh, way to explain what we do is we're a local alternative to a Spectrum or a Verizon. So a uh, third generation family business uh, started in central New York, Holland Patton, New York, back in 1905. Uh, fast forward to the early 80s, uh, my dad, Jerry McCarthy, um, he started uh, Northland Telephone, which was uh, the first long distance uh, telephone company in New York State. And from there, uh, we've just evolved to where we are today, uh, 105 employees. Uh, we have uh, a very robust fiber network um, throughout the central New York region uh, with offices in Holland Patent, uh, Utica, Syracuse, and um, just an amazing team of people that, you know, their, their number one focus is just making sure that our customers are successful. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, throughout the pandemic, I know uh, something that I want to talk about is, well, first of all, how is Northland doing? Um, but I would love you to talk about, you know, what you guys have, um, you know, been able to provide for businesses during this time. Um, such a crazy kind of, you know, twist that happened back in March. And so, you know, I don't want to focus all on the pandemic because you guys do so many, you know, you're a great company outside of that, but you really did put a lot of focus on helping folks stay afloat and, you know, being connected during this time. So talk a little bit about that. 
Sure. Yeah. Um, so we're doing really well. Um, you know, in the beginning, I'll be honest, it was scary. You didn't know what was happening from one day to the next. Um, and uh, you, we had so many customers, uh, some that were enabled to, to work remotely, and we were able to, to spin them up on the fly. Um, but as we really got into, you know, maybe day two or, two or three, we realized there was quite a few businesses that you know, they needed to, to stay in business, but they couldn't go into their offices and what were they going to do? So we made a decision to offer um, our remote worker tools, the licenses for free. Um, and we did that for, I believe it was somewhere over 3,000 end users. So, so 3,000 you know, workers in, in central New York were able to work safely from their homes, they were able to, um, you know, work behind a, a laptop, and uh, as if they were right in their office. So um, that we did a ton of bandwidth upgrades because, as you can imagine, you have seventy employees in a in an office setting, and then all of a sudden, sixty eight of them are now working from home and and remote remoting back into the office, and that yeah. that was um, that definitely you know took up quite a bit of bandwidth. So we were able to do that on the fly. Um, helped a ton of non for profits. That was a big one because it was very scary for them. You know what? You know were they going to be able to to pay their employees? And you know, as, as we recognize, their fundraising stopped. Yet the lines out the door got bigger. So how, you know how how are they going to manage? And so uh, we really jumped in uh, with all of those organizations as well. And. It was, um, you know, it was the right thing to do, but it was an amazing experience watching our team members. I mean, I knew pre-COVID that we have really amazing people at Northland, but watching these groups of like departments that were flowing into others and answering phones and, and I mean, just working through the night because, you know, we had a, we had a call center that, um, uh, you know, it was a, um, a, suicide prevention line 24 mm-hmm. seven that could not be down yeah. but that was a group of people in a small room answering phones which couldn't happen so we we made some miracles happen and had those folks um you know up and running by saturday morning when the call came in friday afternoon wow so That's and that 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 was because of our team members you know i i can't take credit for any of that that was just folks that knew that this was the right thing to do and and they and and they just rallied it was unbelievable Yeah, that's really amazing. I mean, to think about, you know, just that scenario that you just gave. I mean, when you think about a lot of these, you know, nonprofits and, you know, community resources that act typically all together, right? Like we're like even our job, not as serious as a suicide prevention line, but our job is to bring people together, (laughs) you know, and then when we can't do that, you really have to think of, okay, what creative ways uh, even our events, as you know, we we used your uh, platform to host a couple of events, um, you know, some on a smaller scale, but our cookout, you know, on a larger scale. Um, and really, it's just kind of a means to stay connected, which is, I think, just what people need. You know, it's not our traditional connection, but, you know, as you and I have chatted before on, on uh, the virtual platform, you know, I mean, it's just so, so nice to be able to touch base and see a person instead of just always on the phone. It, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's It's been amazing. I mean, I know you have to be super safe for your son. I have to be super safe for my mom, but business still has to go on. Yeah. And, you know, communities still have to, to rally and get together. You know, I talk about the non for profits, but, you know, we also found creative ways for um, customers. You know, yeah. Taylor and the Cook, their doors were shut. You know, mm-hmm. what, what were they going to do? And we came up with a really creative idea to have a virtual wine tasting. And I, you were on it. I, it was a blast. It was so much fun. I learned a ton. They did an amazing job safely packaging um, the food and the wine ahead mm-hmm. of time. And, and we were all able to get together and, and, and learn a lot and have some laughs. And, and it was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. I know. I hope Tim does another one of those. I, I yeah. really, that was probably one of the highlights of what we did <laughs> during the pandemic. I mean, it was just like so much fun. And yeah. like you said, it was all safe. I think for an extra like 10 bucks, it was all delivered to our door. We didn't even have to go in to pick it up. Um, and it really just like a special kind of date night thing when you also learn a little bit about 
these local wines and um, and all the cheeses and everything. It was really cool. So I hope you guys yeah. like those. <laughs> I do too. I do too. Um, so Maureen, you've talked a, about a couple of things that I know you're proud of, but um, anything in particular you want to highlight as um, you know, besides, I, I, I don't know how it could get any better than you guys solving, um, you know, solving all these issues for, for businesses and organizations, but anything else that you're particularly proud of for Northland this year or, or even just in general? Yeah. Yes. Uh, thanks for asking. There's, there's a lot, you know, I keep talking about our people and, uh, we, uh, you know, looking back, I mean, we realized that we actually were ready for this, this pandemic and, um, not knowing that it was coming and certainly, you know, having the, the technology. Um, but, you know, we've been working really, really hard over the last few years of just having a, a really solid vision of doing the right things and, um, you know, a, a, about just really being present and, and just, just having a, a great team. Uh, we have 105 people um, that are part of the Northland family, and they all work here in central New York, minus one. We do have one in L.A. Um, but overall, you know, these are families that, that go to school with our families that, that shop in our local stores that, you know, really have an impact on the local economy. So our competitive landscape has widen quite a bit you know you think of the zooms and and there's a lot out there that have become household names and you know what, what's important for the community to know is that we have the same if not better technology but we have a presence here in central new york you know zoom doesn't employ anyone here they're, they're not a member of the utica chamber um, so, you know, that's really important. And um, I'm really proud of the folks that we work with. Um, we're hiring. Um, we have seven open positions right now, which is really exciting. Um, so, you know, we're, you know, if, if anybody's watching this and they want to be part of a really innovative, amazing team, um, I encourage you to, uh, to go to our website and apply. Great. Yeah, we'll definitely make sure to link that on our Facebook page as well. And I want to share one other piece um, that I don't think a lot of people know. Um, my brother, Jim McCarthy, who is the um, CEO of Northland, um, he's kind of an under-the-radar guy. He, is, um, he became the chairman of the New York State Telephone Association this year. And um, that was something that was really important to my father, um, our father, Jerry McCarthy. And, um, you know, becoming the president of the New York State Telephone Association is a really big deal. It's a great resource for Central New York, um, for customers, for um, um, you know any businesses that are trying to navigate through such a crazy time. Um, they're about to celebrate their 100th anniversary next year. He's also heavily involved with the U.S. Telecom Association. So, you know, we're talking about rural broadband issues. We're talking about, you know, kids that, you know, have to work or have to go to school remotely or in a hybrid situation. You know, the, you know, these are issues that he is, he's, he's at the table for. So um, I'm really proud of him. He's just done an amazing job. And uh, I just, I, I want the Central New York community to know that, um, you know, that, you know, we're, we have a seat at the table for, for all of you. Yeah, that's so awesome. I know we, we chatted about that before and just such a, you know, I felt proud knowing that, you know, yeah. he's really representing our area and in a family owned business, you know, that came and was rooted in our area. I just think that's so cool for people to know. Um, and so Maureen, let me just shift gears for, for a second and talk about what it means to you guys. I mean, you know, you mentioned Jim, you know, being recognized on this national level, um, you know, how about being recognized among your business peers as a finalist uh, for these awards? So I know, um, you know, a little bit smaller scale, but, uh, you know, we have so many members and great businesses in the community and being recognized as really one of the top 15 uh, as one of the 15 finalists that we have. What does that mean to Northland? So this is a huge deal. So, you know, Utica and Central New York, this is where it all began. You know, th these are our roots. So to be honored locally is, um, is amazing. You know, and I mentioned my dad, I mean, this, this would have been a big deal for him. So I'll do it without <laughs> getting choked up. Um, you know, and, and, and to be, um, a finalist with Casa Imports and, and Standard Insulating, you know, it's just a, a good circle to be in. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, really honored. Um, I value our relationship with the Utica Chamber. You know, pre-COVID, we were so involved. I mean, Dan Amato's 
a board member, um, you know, you have, you've always had amazing events, um, amazing speaker series, have just been a resource to our business and our, our team members. And, you know, and now, you know, you've, you've rallied and used our tools and, and that we really are, are grateful for you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for your support as well. Um, so how can the community um, be supportive and, and get in touch? So like say somebody's watching today and they're not a Northland customer, um, what would be the best way for them to get in touch to find out more about the services or do you guys have like an onboarding thing? Um, what's the best way for somebody to go from not being a customer to finding out more information? Um, so you can visit us at uh, northland.net. Um, there's quite a bit of information there. Um, an evolving website that is, is um, uh, growing. Um, there is a piece there um, that does talk about our good neighbor event that was canceled. I don't know, Megan, if we talked about that, but I just wanted to touch on that briefly because sure. as I mentioned in the beginning about in, we have a lot of nonprofit customers and, and they're very dear to our heart. I mean, what they do in our community is, is unbelievable. So um, I had uh, worked um, to create an event that was supposed to happen on June 29th um, on our dad's, would have been his 89th birthday, trying to figure out a way that we could have a really big impact. Um, on the Central New York nonprofit community. So we had 30 nonprofits from Herkimer to Syracuse that were all going to be a part of this event. We were on track of raising over $100,000 and uh, COVID, COVID stopped that. So I had to turn around and go to these folks and say, you know, I know we were going to raise money for you and all your funding has been stopped because of COVID and, um, and now, now we're doing the opposite. And it was really heartbreaking, you know, and I just felt that the, you know, the event was canceled and it was done. And the group of nonprofits rallied and said, no, we want to stay together. And so we meet over Northland Max once a month. And, um, and I, I just sit back and, and, and they're all helping each other. They're all telling stories about their, their new ways of fundraising and what's working and what's not working and how they got PPP or, you know, one got FEMA funding and one was struggling to even get through the paperwork and they connected offline. And, you know, the, the food bank, you know, they are, they're, they're putting, they're putting over a million more pounds of food a month, a million more than what they were doing before in the central New York community, which includes Utica. And because of that, they were hiring warehouse workers they were hiring um, uh, drivers and On Point for College is a part of this. And On Point had, you know, students and, and part of their community that were looking for jobs. So they connected offline, you know. So, I mean, it's just all these, it's, it's, it's unbelievably moving to watch these groups of non-for-profits that they, they're just, they've all got each other's backs. They're helping each other, and um, and I'm actually really excited because um, it started off as just the 30 that were part of the the program, it was through an application process and, and we met um, in October and we decided we were gonna um, open it up to all um, Northland nonprofit customers. So um, I know House of Good Shepherd is, is um, a, a part of um, um, the, this award uh, event and, and they're gonna be joining us and it's, it's just, it's, it's awesome to watch and, and, yeah. and they're doing well, they're doing all right. You know, they're, they're struggling, but, but they're, they're making it work. Yeah, that is so cool. And just like yeah. the connection, you know, I feel like that's a common theme throughout the, the show today, but, you know, the connection to be made between people who can help solve problems. I mean, that just must feel really good to you to, you know, have really facilitated that. It's amazing. And just awareness. You know, a lot of people didn't know that, you know, that, you know, ACR Health, um, you know, helps people get insured. I mean, yeah. there's, there's just, you know, there's, there's so much more to these organizations and, 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 and it's, it's really cool. So we have a meeting coming up next Wednesday nice. and uh, these awesome. are going to be um, with the additional new uh, members. So I'm excited to see that's what com great. comes out of that. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. That's awesome. Well, congratulations on that. And it's nice to see that the momentum kept going for that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Maureen, anything else that you want to tell us about? Like any, anything coming up with Northland on the horizon? Um, any exciting news that you guys want to share? Um, really the floor is yours to, to tell everybody anything else you think they'd want to know about Northland Communications. Um, no, you know, I think we've covered a lot. I, you know, I think it's just, 
you know, it, it's just, um, you know, just being a good neighbor, you know, just doing the right thing. Um, you know, by no means are we perfect, you know, um, you know, technology is technology and things happen, but, you know, just being accountable and uh, being present and just being a part of the community. Um, that's, that's what we strive for. And that was so important to our dad and, and we're trying to, to continue his legacy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, congratulations on being a finalist. I know your family must be very proud. Um, we wish you the best of luck at the event on December 15th. Um, really yeah. quickly again, just tell everybody your website one more time. We'll put it up on the screen for those who are watching, but for those who are listening, just let them know of the best way to get in touch with Northland. Sure. Uh, yeah, again, you can find us online at uh, northland.net and uh, certainly you're welcome to, to give us a call 624-2216 um, you know we're ultimately we're, we're just we're about trying to do the best that we can to make our customers successful and that's also making our team members successful and and we are growing so um, that's right you, yeah so if we can help your business or if you're looking for a new career please reach out yeah, definitely. And you guys heard they have seven job openings too. So make sure yeah. that you go check out the website to find out all about those. Uh, and of course, go check out the website to find more about all of Northland services, especially have to give a plug for the platform we're on right now, Max UC, a yeah. great platform. If you guys are looking for a digital solution uh, for your meetings or conference calls or anything like that, please make sure to check that out. We use it at the chamber and it's a great, great tool for the community. Um, and just to give that recap again, where you guys can watch the show to find out if Northland is won the Business of the Year Awards and our other four winners. Um, please join us on Tuesday, December 15th, again, from 7 to 8 p.m., and that's going to be on CBS Utica. For all of that information, though, you can easily go to the website, greateruticachamber.org. Uh, make sure you join our mailing list. That's a great way to make sure that you get recaps of all these episodes because we want you to get to know all these businesses. And again, the name of the game is how can you support them? How can we make sure all of our area businesses stay open and stay thriving? And that's what we're here to help make happen. So uh, Maureen, thank you again for joining me this morning. It's so nice to see you. And we wish you the best of luck on the 15th. Thank you, Megan. We're excited and um, certainly grateful for you and your team, everything that you've been doing pre-COVID and, and through this pandemic. And we'll get to the other side together. Yes, thank you.